Hi, good evening, everyone. So today uh, we will start with our monthly GK uh, review. And uh, what we intend to do in today's session is take you across some 75 to 80 questions, which we feel uh, are the most important questions for the month of January. And uh, going forward, this exercise will be done every month based on our research and analysis. We will try and cover uh, as many topics. So across spectrums. So today's session, we will begin with uh, sports, Republic Day, Ayodhya, uh, major awards, and uh, a lot of tidbits here and there. Uh, books, launches, um, the, uh, the government schemes, uh, even some state government schemes, etc., etc. So we will do it in MCQ style so that it's more engaging. You can attempt and you can, you know, let me know the answer. So uh, Priyanka, ma'am, and I both are here. We will be conducting this session today. And, um, and the reason that we are conducting this session is that, uh, you know, I, I feel that uh, based on whatever analysis and research we have done, this is a one-stop solution in terms of understanding the, uh, you know, in nutshell, the GK for the month of January. All right. So um, without much further ado, we'll uh, get started. By the way, my name is Satyam Shankar Sahai. I'm the founder of Flat Possible. And uh, with me is Priyanka Ma'am. She is an alumnus of uh, Army Law School, Mohali, and she's been teaching civil services aspirants as well as class students for the last seven years. And uh, we look forward to having a great session with you guys. All right. So let's have this first question. And in the chat box, I would like your answers. Who was crowned the female Wushu athlete of the year? I do not want any of you to Google the answer. Uh, if you read about it, you better mark it. But there is no point in Googling because we'll anyways be, uh, you know, discussing and analyzing. So this award is given by the International Wushu Foundation. And the answer is uh, option number A here, which is Narum. Roshibina Devi, and she belongs to Manipur, right? Uh, she's the same lady who uh, who's just about 29 years old, and um, she won the bronze medal in the 2018 Asian Games and in the 2022 uh, Asian Games in Hangzhou in China, she won the silver medal, right? And you remember this particular sport came in the news last last year because some of our athletes, in fact, three of them, could not participate in the Asian Games. And do you know the reason why? You can just comment in the chat box. They're from Arunachal Pradesh. So why did China stamp on their passport and they were not able to travel? And this was a major row between uh, the Indian and the Chinese government then, right? Okay, so the answer is A. So that's the lady for you. 2018 and 2022 Asian Games, bronze. This was in Jakarta, 18 games. And 2022 was in silver, was silver medal. That was in Hangzhou in China. And she is also the recipient of the Arjuna Award, right? So she has got the Wushu Athlete of the Year by the International Wushu Foundation. Uh, so just remember one thing, that Wushu is basically a Chinese martial art, all right? The other person who has been in news, you know the elections have happened. Imran Khan, the famous cricketer from Pakistan who made them win the World Cup. Uh, which year was this? Can you tell me in the chat box? Which year did Pakistan win the World Cup? Robert, I'm not sure why I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I'm not sure. 
de coisas. Ok, alright. So, isko side pe rakho. Yes, sahi. Aawaz aa rahi hai. Theek. So, yeah. So, Pakistan won the World Cup in 1992. And can you tell me which country did they defeat in the 1992 World Cup? Can you tell me the country that they defeated in the World Cup 1992? So, the 1992 World Cup. they defeated england and this team was captained by imran khan who also in 1996 founded the party uh, tehreek-e insaf and uh, he was the prime minister of pakistan and because of the tosh khana case he was ousted multiple cases were lodged and this happens in pakistan because uh, you know no government is able to complete their fifth term and he lost the faith of the army or whatever you call it uh the army to cover in a way through uh you know imprisoning and all the cases against him but one of the fa fantastic cricketers of the 80s and 90s and 1992 that world cup imran khan wasim akram javed miyada you know one of the fantastic world cups they were almost out of the world cup they lost the first two matches and they came back and won anyway so that's imran khan for you and uh uh by being in jail and stripped of everything they were still able to do a decent performance in the pakistan elections right okay now let's come to tennis so we had the australian open and um, the australian open as you all know it is in uh, melbourne and uh, can you tell me the name of the stadium or the arena where the Australian Open is held. The name of the arena in Melbourne where Australian Open is held. Okay, it's after a very popular and one of the most successful Australian tennis player, who has also been a you know a Grand Slam winner. You know, when I say Grand Slam, it means all four slams. I'll just come to it. The answer to this is. Jenik Sena, right? He is option is B. He is the winner of the Australian Open, right? And uh, Sena won his first uh, Grand Slam. He defeated Medvedev, and uh, what a fantastic match it was! It was a five-setter, and uh, Jenik Sena won this match, right? So uh, the other good thing about uh, this. Um, uh australian open is that our you know our tennis player rohan bopana at the age of 43 he has won the doubles um you know he has won the doubles uh, in the australian open with matthew ebden he is from australia and uh, he won the doubles so at the age of 43 so that's again uh, you know a record of his sort that he is the oldest guy to win the Uh, a grand slam okay so that's janik sinner and uh, we have um we have the men's doubles which is rohan bopana and matthew ebden and uh, yes and you should also know the women singles was won by aryana sabalenka so she uh, this was um, her back to back win she also won in the 2023 all right so you should know this name um Ariana Sabalenka she is presently ranked number 2 and uh, so I, i i i firmly believe that there's a lot in store as far as the um, you know tennis is concerned uh, because sinner alfra is a lot of young players who have really come in the circuit so the next couple of years is going to be really interesting so i hope you know what the various slams are we start with the australian open then we have the french open so australian open is played on the hard court then we have the french open which is a clay court then you have the grass court and then you have the synthetic court at the us open which is held at the arthur ashe now important thing to know about this australian open is a person who has won the maximum number of australian open can you tell me the name of that person and how many uh, how many australian open has he won 
oh, I've already put this. So it's Novak Djokovic. You already know that. Uh, and can you tell me the number of sla- Grand Slam, Australian uh, Grand Slams that he has won? Djokovic. How many Australian Grand Slam has he won? Australian Open. Can you tell me how many Australian Open has Novak Djokovic won? Okay, the answer is 10. Yes, the answer is 10. So Federer is very short. He was he won about 6. And uh, Djokovic is presently on 10. And uh, if you look at these three greats, Djokovic, Nadal and, uh, and Federer, so between the three of them, they have won 66 Grand Slam. So the last 13, 14 years has been absolutely fantastic. So Federer is now retired, sitting on 20. Nadal, uh, almost going to retire, but he's at 22. And Djokovic at 24. One more thing I would like you to know is that what is a Golden Slam? So when we say Golden Slam, it means somebody who has won all the four slams and an Olympic gold right, in the same calendar year. And the only person who has done it is the great Steffi Graf from Germany. Okay, so that's called a golden slam, right? And when I tell, when I ask you what is a grand slam, so grand slam is somebody who has won uh, all the four slams, Australian, French, um, Wimbledon, and uh, US Open in the same calendar year. So that's, so who all have done it? Uh, in men's, you have Federer, Djokovic, uh, Rod Lever. Rod Lever has won it twice in 62 and 69. And um, Andre Gassi, right? So these four players have won uh, Grand Slam, right? And Steffi has won the Golden Slam, which includes the Olympic medal. So I think this is year 1888 when Steffi won the Golden Slam, right? So just cross-check that. I think it's 1888, right? Uh, Okay, by the way, just one more thing. Uh, do you know Sabalinka? She is from which country? Uh, which country is Sabalinka from? Can I can you answer me in the inbox? Sabalinka, who won the back-to-back Australian Open, which country is she from? Yeah, she is from this country, which is assisting Russia in the Ukraine war. This, she is from this country that is assisting Russia in the Ukraine war. And that's Belarus, right? So uh, she represents uh, Belarus. And uh, can you tell me who is the president or the so-called dictator of Belarus? It's Alexander Lukashenko. All right, Alexander Lukashenko is the president of Belarus. Uh, what is the capital of Belarus? It's Minsk. And Belarus is actually a landlocked country. Uh, on the top of it is Russia. And then you have north side, you have Lithuania and Latvia. And then you have Poland to its, uh, uh, Poland to its west. And uh, to its south is Ukraine. Right. And I don't know if you have heard about it, but uh, the nuclear arsenal of Russia, you know, was moved to uh, Belarus when the war started. So Alexander Lukashenko is also, uh, you know, quite a nasty guy. So he wanted to trouble uh, the Western Europe and he started, uh, you know, getting people from the Middle East, from Iraq, Syria and through the borders, started pushing them into Poland and Eastern Europe and then, you know, to Western Europe. So he started this migration, uh, illegal migrants crisis a couple of years ago. Okay, so that's about uh, Belarus, the capitalism. So you see, GK is connected. So I just, you know, thought of telling you about Belarus because Sabalinka is from that place. And uh, yeah, nothing much there. The event started in 1905. 1905 in Hardcourt, and the arena is Rod Labour. Remember that he is Australian great. He won four slams. I mean, he won uh, he won four opens in a year twice. That was in 62 and 69. All right, 
So just one second. Uh, right. Who was the winner of Yonex Sunrise India Open 2024? Now, this event just happened in the month of January. And uh, can you tell me who the winner was? Can you tell me who the winner was? The winner is Tai Zhu Yang. I, you know, just excuse me for the pronunciation if I've got it wrong. So that's option number B. And she was world number one in year 2016. And a Chinese Taipei player or Taiwan. And um, right, she's from Taiwan. You know, there is a problem between China and Taiwan. And we'll have a detailed discussion on it later. Uh, Wing, you know, who is the president of uh, of Taiwan has, you know, just won the elections in January. So we'll take that up in detail in February monthly analysis, right? So the answer is Ying. She's presently ranked world number three. Earlier, she was ranked world number one. So she won the India Open, right? So if you look at this uh, India Open, it's organized by the Badminton Association of India. Badminton Association of India was set up in 1934. And uh, the president is Himanta Biswas Sarma, not important, uh, established in 1934, already mentioned, the Badminton World Federation in 1934, and the headquarters of the Badminton World Federation is in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. All right. So I think what you just need to know is the name of the person who won the India Open, which is Tai Zhu Ying, presently all India, all, I mean, presently world rank is number three. All right. Okay. So this is the thing, but I think what's more important is just remember the women's singles winner. The men's single winner is Xi Yuki China. All right. Now, you know, uh, actually many games have happened the last uh, in the month of January. So January becomes quite important uh, with respect to that. So we had the uh, Kelo India that started in, you know, January in so the question here is, who was the winner of Kelo in the Youth Games 2024? So that's one part of it. Before that, I would like to ask you, where was Kelo India held? What is the venue of Kelo India? Can somebody tell me? Can you just answer in the chat box? Yeah, so the Kelo India was organized in Tamil Nadu, right? Kelo India was organized in Tamil Nadu. And uh, the winner of Kelo India Youth Games 2024 is Maharashtra, right? Maharashtra has won the Youth Games Kelo India 2024. All right? So that's Maharashtra. And uh, just remember one thing, what's important about this game is, one, Youth Games were held in Tamil Nadu first, second, Maharashtra won this, and third, the mascot, and fourth, the theme, right? So this was the sixth edition right? The cities where it was organized, Tamil Nadu, all cities in Tamil Nadu. First time squash was introduced here. And what's important here is the mascot, which is Veera Mangal. She's popularly called. And this, she was a Rani uh, and she uh, fought against, you know, the Britishers around 1780, 1775. And, you know, she was a very brave woman. So it's she is a mascot. So, Veera Mangai Mangal. So, this is what you need to remember. So, Veera Mangai. So, that's the mascot for you. She is the mascot for Kelo India Youth Games. Veera Mangal. Right? So, just remember this. Veer Himmatwala. So, Veera Mangal. So, you should know the mascot. Right? Kelo India Youth Games was held in Tamil Nadu. The mascot is Veera Mangal. Right? So, this is the picture that you should remember, right? The first, the team that won was Maharashtra. All right, so are we clear with this? Okay, let's move on. So till now, what we have done, we have done, we have done the Australian Open, we have discussed that, we have done the Indian Open, which happened in January, and now Kelo India Youth Games that was held in Tamil Nadu. So basically in the cities of Tamil Nadu, and Maharashtra won this. Veera Mangal was the, is the mascot or was the mascot. All right. Then we had the Winter Games. The Winter Games were 
So like the youth games, we had the winter games. So we had the Khelo India winter games, right? And this is the mascot for the winter games. The winter games were held in, um, in Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir. So it was, they jointly hosted this, okay? And Snow Leopard, uh, so Shinshi is a Snow Leopard, you know, has is the mascot of Kelo India Winter Games. All right. So what we need to remember is Kelo India Winter Games happened. And the games were held in Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir, right at the top. And Shinshi, which is a Snow Leopard, right, is the mascot. Now you should know about snow leopard because recently in January, the survey of snow leopard was done and uh, Ladakh has got some 477 snow leopards and uh, not very sure about the figure, but I think the exact number of snow leopards that we have in India is 728. So please double check that. Uh, snow leopards is about 728 and Ladakh has got some 477. Uh, that's the state which has got largest population of snow leopards. So just get the number right. Just Google that once and find out. So snow leopard, right? And recently, if you remember, if you noted, there's this country that has made, okay, Kavya Rai says 718. Okay, so just check that. Okay, that's cool. So recently, a country has um, made snow leopard as its national symbol. Can you tell me which country is this? Recently, a country has... Um, has made snow leopard as its <clears throat> as its national symbol. So can you tell me which country is this? Okay. The country is Kyrgyzstan. The country is Kyrgyzstan. So Kyrgyzstan's national symbol is snow leopard. Okay. What is the capital of Kyrgyzstan? What is the capital of Kyrgyzstan? It's Bishkek. Right? Bishkek. However you pronounce it, so just excuse me for that. Bishkek is the capital of Kyrgyzstan. And what are the countries and surrounding uh, Kyrgyzstan? So it's again a landlocked country. To its right, we have China. Uh, to its north, we have Kazakhstan. To its left, we have uh, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. Right? So that's how it is. So when you're, you know, it's all connected. So you know, how we connected to this was Winter Games, um, Kelo India held in Ladakh, and then we came to the Snow Leopard population, which is 718, and Shenshi is the mascot. And from there, we link to which country has made Snow Le Leopard its national symbol, and we move to Kyrgyzstan. And when we look at Kyrgyzstan, which is a country in the Central Asia, we should know, I mean, what are the neighbors? So we should know the capital of Tajikistan. We should know the capital of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan, and so on and so forth. So, you know, just, I mean, enjoy the process of learning GK because things are connected. That's when it is going to become interesting and you're going to enjoy it rather than just, you know, mugging everything. So just connect the dots and things get linked. Right? Okay. So third now. So we have done two games. Uh, the games that were held in India. And uh, so this is the third question now. Where were India's first beach games held? So this is the first edition of the beach games in India. I would like to know from you what is the answer to this question. I would like to know from you where were the beach games held and also who won the beach games. Who won the beach games? Can I have some answers now? Okay. The answer to this question is due. Right? So you know that we have the uh, union territory of Dadar and Nagar, Daman and Diu. So it's one union territory. Uh, so Diu, uh, Ghagola back. Uh, Gagola Beach, which is a blue flag beach, I'll come to that later, is where these beach games were held. And the, the state that won the beach games 
आयरोनिकली इज मध्य प्रदेश विच इज अ लैंड लॉक स्टेट आई मीन यू डोंट हैव द बीच इज देर राइट सो दैट्स अमेजिंग बिकॉज मध्य प्रदेश वन द बीच बीच गेम्स which were held and this was a first edition so and it was held in dew right so if you look at dadar and nagar haveli daman and dew so this comes in uh, it has parts in gujarat and the maharashtra border right and if you look at dew it is slightly offshore right so when you're doing this again look at mark the location of dew and just get an understanding you know where the location of this particular union territory is right so that again helps connect the dots right so this is held in a place called gogala beach of dew right and uh, overall winner is madhya pradesh right so just remember this the key points for the beach games would be gogala beach in go uh, in dew and madhya pradesh won this all right so that's important are you guys with me are you understanding is it comfortable also remember the mascot here is dolphin and it's been called pearl so this is the mascot for the beach games so just remember we did the youth games just now and the youth games that were held in tamil nadu mascot is uh veera mangal then we came to the winter games right khelo india mascot is sinchi the snow leopard and now we have the beach games the mascot is uh pearl which is a dolphin right so that's right the next question is from the world of cricket i'm sure a lot of you unlike me uh our cricket fans and um so the question here is who so we had the naman awards for bcci and we also had the icc awards right the headquarters of icc is in dubai who is the icc men's test cricketer of the year who is the icc men's test cricketer of the year the answer is can you tell me what the answer is i would like to know some answers have some answers here okay see the important word here is test cricket so the answer is usman khwaja right can you tell me which country he belongs to usman khwaja can you tell me the country that he belongs to Usman Khwaja can you tell me the country that he belongs to uh, important word here is test so he belongs to australia usman khwaja belongs to australia <coughs> priyanka can you just mute yourself yes sir yes sir. sorry okay so uh, just a little tidbit about the icc awards the international cricket council the headquarters is in dubai uae this was established in 1909 uh, the chairman and ceo not very important but just for your benefit i have put it here okay all right um now remember one thing i just gave you uh, told ask you about the test cricketer of the year so there were many awards which were given the you know the men's cricketer of the year award went to pat cummins so some of you in the chat box have answered pat cummins when well, he's got the gary field sobers trophy for icc so the best cricketer of the year and that's called the garfield sobers i'm sorry garfield sobers and that is pat cummins right and uh, what else we need to know test cricket is usman khwaja and our own virat kohli has got the icc men's odi cricketer of the year award right and also remember this the icc women cricketer of the year is nat brunt england right so i think this is important so mark this as important and garfield sobers is very important you should know about the test cricketer you should know about the one day 
right? So, so it's just take a note of this. All right, then coming to the uh, ODI Cricketer of the Year. In women, we have Charmari Athapattu. So we had this famous men's cricketer Atapattu. So we have Charmari Atapattu. She is from Sri Lanka. And T20 Cricketer of the Year is Surya Kumar Yadav. Remember that. So four names in men's. Garfield Sobers, right? That has gone to the Cricketer of the Year has gone to Pat Cummins. Second is One Day has gone to Virat Kohli. Then Usman Khwaja has got the Test Cricketer of the Year award. And T20 has gone to Surya Kumar Yadav. Remember that. And, um, and, and one more. Uh, yeah, ICC Women ODI Cricketer of the Year is Atapattu. And the other one was in the previous one, which is the Cricketer of the Year. Like Pat Cummins has got it there. We've got no Nat Stiver Brun, England, in the women's thing. So do not ignore the women category, right? So, you know, so that's important. Just keep track of women category also. <sighs> okay, ICC Emerging Men's Cricketer of the Year is Rachin Ravindra. So he is not, he is originally from India, but he represents New Zealand now. So he's an emerging cricketer of the year. Right? All right. So now let's come to the next one, which is the BCCI Awards. And this is the Naman Awards. It's called the Naman Awards. Right? The headquarters of BCCI is in Bombay. And I'll just quickly go through it. So Lifetime Achievement Award went to Ravi Shastri and uh, Paruk Engineer, right? Uh, this, they got the Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Pauli Omrigar Award, Best International Cricketer went to Shubham Gill. So both this are very important. And you should know the Best International Cricketer women, which is Deepti Sharma. So I think these three are very important. The rest... Not that important, but the first you should remember the Lifetime Achievement Award. So across a lot of MCQs that I've seen, this question is there, right? Lifetime Achievement Award has gone to Ravi Shastri, Paruk Engineer. And then you have uh, Best International Cricketer of the Year, which is also called the Pauli Omrigar Award, gone to Shubham Gill. And Women Cricketer, Best International Women Cricketer is Tikti Sharma. So remember that. So we have Ravi Shastri, Paruk Engineer. We have Shubham Gale and we have Deepti Sharma. All right. Yeah, so the awards were given this year, Kavya. The awards were given this year. Okay. All right. Now moving on. All right. The next one. Who was awarded the Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award? Now, this is the biggest award in sports, which is the Khel Ratna Award. So, can you tell me who got the Khel Ratna Award this year? And which game do they represent? The answer is Chirag Shetty and Reddy. Right? So, both of them would be the option here. Right? So, there is this famous doubles uh, Indian team. Right? And uh, they have got the Khel Ratna Award. So, um, remember, this award is given by the President of India, which is Draupadi Murmur. The first award was given to Vishwanathan Anand. And uh, Major Dhyanchan, he got the Padma Bhushan in 1956. And uh, 29th August is also celebrated as the National Sports Day. So, just remember Shetty and uh, Shetty and Reddy, right? Both these guys have got the Khel Ratna Award, right? And they have got uh, world number one ranking in the world ranking. All right. So remember that. Okay. Next question. So uh, who has been awarded the Women's Goalkeeper of the Year Award by ICC? The answer is Mary Erips. So I'll just quickly move on. Uh, the men's player of the year has gone to Lionel. So this is the FIFA uh, award ceremony. The FIFA men's uh, the FIFA uh, men's player of the year award has gone to Lionel Messi. Women player of the year award has gone to 
Altenia Bonwati, she's a Spanish player. All right, so these two are important. And the question I just asked, I just asked you, is the women goalkeeper of the year, which is Mary Erips. All right, the rest you can skip. Let's move on. Now, the next one is, I would like you to answer this question. Who has been awarded the Balkan Athlete of the Year for the record eight time? So you know what the Balkan countries are. Who has been awarded the Balkan Athlete of the Year? So somebody has asked me, will the PDF be? Yes, Chirag Shetty and Reddy, they've been uh, awarded the Khel Ratna Award. Major Dhyanchan Khel Ratna Award for badminton. Yes, that's right. Yes, the PDF. So you get this current affairs magazine, right? It, it will also be uploaded on our website. You can, uh, on your my zone. So it's going to be available. Okay, but what's important is that even from the magazine, we have taken out the things which we feel are important and you should know. Okay. Can you tell me what the answer is? The answer to this question is Novak Djokovic. So he belongs to Serbia, right? He belongs to Serbia. And he has won 24 Grand Slams. I just told you when we were discussing Australian Open, he has won 24. Nadal has won 22. And uh, Federer has won 20. So he has received this award for the eighth time. Right? Can you tell me what is the capital of Serbia in the chat box? All right, so we are mostly done with sports. So we have covered uh, the Australian Open, which is important. So you should know the, the men's winner, Sinner, the women's winner, Sabalenka, the doubles men's winner, because Rohan Bupana was there. He's the oldest guy to win it at the age of 43. So that's why it becomes important. His partner is an Australian, Matthew Ebden. Then we discuss about the Australian Open, about their arena, which is called Rod Lever, right? We discuss about Grand Slams and we discuss about Golden Slam. Then we did, did the Kelo India Youth Games, Chennai, the mascot, Rani Mangal and uh, uh, Veera Mangal, sorry, Rani Veera Mangal. And uh, then we did the Beach Games, which is in Dew, uh, Madhya Pradesh won the game. Kelo India Youth Games was won by... Maharashtra. Then we also discussed about. Uh, then we went to, yeah, we went to Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir, where the Winter Games, Khelo India Winter Games were held for the first time. And then we discussed about some awards, like the Khel Ratan Award. That's important. Then we did the ICC Awards, right? The ICC Cricketer of the Year Award. I mean, Garfield Chobers went to Pat Cummins, Test Cricketer Usman Raj Khwaja. Then we discussed. Uh, one day that was Virat Kohli, BCCI awards was Dipti Sharma, and so on and so forth. So you know that these awards are important. The Naman Awards of BCCI, Lifetime Achievement Award went to Farooq Engineer and uh, Ravi Shastri. So keep a note of all these things, right? Pauli Umanga Trophy went to Shubham Gill, right? So so you have to make make a note of these things. Now we are coming to some important military exercises. So month of January, there were many military exercises, right? I have kept a note of these exercises and we will discuss it one by one. So what I'll do is quickly, I'll, um, yeah, so I'll take you across some exercises. One is the exercise. So we, we did the snow leopard, Kyrgyzstan, and that is, you know, the national symbol. So Kyrgyzstan and India had a military exercise, right? And uh, this was in a place called Baklo in the Himachal Pradesh, right? So these were the special forces of India and um, Kyrgyzstan. And this exercise is called Khanjar. Exercise Khanjar. I'll come to all of them, but I'll just give you a little bit of idea about the military exercises. So this was an exercise of the special forces of Kyrgyzstan and India. Okay, so this is number one. So this is number one. The second is, the second exercise is uh, the Air Force of India, UAE and France, right? 
So they had this exile called um, Desert Knight. Exile Desert Knight, right? So this was held in the um, Arabian Sea, around the Arabian Sea, and the Air Force was participating. All right. So this was the second exercise, which is Desert Night, right? The third exercise. The third exercise is um, Desert Cyclone, which was in Rajasthan. So in Desert Cyclone, uh, we had the Army of India and the UAE. So that is Desert Cyclone. Desert Cyclone. So Khanjar, Desert Night, Desert Cyclone. So these three exercises. Then we had one exercise with the Saudi Arabia. We had exercise with the Saudi Arabia, which is called Sada, S-A-D-A. -A. The name is Tansik, T-A-N-S-E-E-Q. So the fourth exercise. Okay, most of these military exercises are held in Rajasthan. So just remember that. So Sadar Tansik was held in Rajasthan. Desert Knight was the Air Force. Desert Knight was the Air Force of UAE, India, and France. All right. The fourth one is, um, okay, yeah. The fourth one is of significance because of Ayodhya. So in India, we have Ayodhya. Thailand has Ayutthaya. Right, so we had this excise Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya is they also worship Ram, and we also so these are two old cities, and therefore we did this excise called exercise Ayutthaya. Yeah, Sada Tansik, right? So Sada Tansik is the excise, and then we have the fifth exercise, which was with Japan, which is called Sayo Kaijin. Sayo Kaijin. Sayo. Kaijin. So just remember Kaizen Uta Kaijin. So this is a Japanese word and Sayog is an Indian thing. So Sayo Kaijin is the exercise that we had uh, with Japan. And this is the, the coastal uh, guards. This exercise was the coastal guard. If you look at this, this is a military. Desert Sarkaram is also military. Uh, Kanjar is military, special forces. Desert Knight is the air force. Right. Then there was one more exercise, which is called Exercise uh, Sea Dragon. Now, this Exercise Sea Dragon, this was led by US. So typically you had the AUKUS countries, which is you have Australia, UK, US. OK. And besides this, we had Japan, uh, sorry, Japan, and we had South Korea and India. So five countries participated in Exercise Sea Dragon. Right. Remember that exercise was called as Sea Dragon. The exercise was called as Sea Dragon. And this was held in near the islands of Guam. Right? So Guam is controlled by US and it's somewhere in the Pacific Sea. If you look at the location in map, it will be below Japan on its uh, to its south uh, east and uh, to the right of Philippines. So somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, right? This uh, particular exercise was held, which is called Exercise Sea Dragon. Now, the exercise which is most important according to me is, uh, is the exercise called Steadfast Defender. The exercise Steadfast Defender. Now, this was held in the transatlantic area. And uh, what was uh, special about this exercise was that this exercise was conducted by the NATO, right? And so all the 31 countries of NATO, which has the new member, which is Finland, you know about NATO. We're going to read about it when I discuss with you. Uh, it also had the member, which is, uh, you know, going to be joining soon. Uh, Turkey has given its consent. Only one country is left, which I feel is Hungary. So once Hungary you know, gives uh, the, say the yes, then 
uh, Sweden is also going to be part of it. So 31 countries plus Sweden were part of this exercise. This is the first time that uh, such a big mobilization happened. So 90,000 groups have you know participated in this particular exercise with this mobilization, right? Uh, such a big mobilization has happened and NATO has organized it, right? Okay, so let's just come to the questions now based on this. Sada Tansik is a military exercise between India and what is the answer? I just did it. It will be India and yes, Saudi Arabia will be the answer there. The second question. So this exercise, you now like I said, the military exercises are generally in um, in Rajasthan, right? If it is in India, it is in Rajasthan. So this is Rajasthan, India, and Saudi Arabia, and this was the first edition. So remember this: Sada Tansik. Okay. Okay. Then is Desert Cyclone. So this is a military exercise between India and Desert Cyclone. Is a military exercise between India and the answer would be UAE, right? So this is desert cyclone, okay? The next one. So remember one thing, it's again military exercise, Rajasthan, first edition. Okay, military exercise hai to Rajasthan no. Remember that, okay? So we are done with the second one. So the first, word, first one was Sada Tansi. The second one is Desert Cyclone, which is India and UAE. Sada Tansik is India and Saudi Arabia. Okay. The 11th edition of the Joint Special Forces exercise between India and Kyrgyzstan. Where was this held? I told you about it. The operation is called, the exercise is called Khanjar. Right? And the place is called Bahalok where this was organized. So can you tell me, uh, can you tell me the state in which this was organized? The answer would be Himachal Pradesh. And the place is called Balok. All right. The place is called Balok. All right. So the next one is the Sea Dragon. Now, this is a naval exercise. And I told you about it. The island is called Guam. It's held in the Guam Island. Right. Was held in Guam Island and India in how many countries? So the country that organized this island is owned by US. So we had USA, Australia, UK, Japan, and uh, South Korea. India. So one thing I just want to clarify here. One of the countries did not yeah, India, South Korea. So UK wasn't part of it. I'm sorry. So UK wasn't part of it. Let's cut this. So we have USA, Australia, Japan, South Korea, and India. Five countries participated in this. So this was held in Guam Islands. So this is southeast of Japan, right? And this is a naval exercise. This is a naval exercise, right? So Indians, uh, we sent an anti-submarine you know, so mostly this exercise on anti-submarine. So Indians, uh, you know, the we what we sent was an anti-submarine aircraft. So I'm forgetting about the name of the aircraft. It was P something something. So uh, P 180 or something. I'm forgetting the name of the aircraft. It's an anti-submarine uh, uh, aircraft. All right. Yeah. So this is the fourth edition of this particular exercise called Sea Dragon. And the place is Guam. You can look at this particular place in the map. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. P-81. Petrol aircraft. Good. It's in the slide. And it's a long range maritime reconnaissance aircraft. So reconnaissance is that you see from a distance. Uh, it's an anti submarine warfare aircraft. So, right. So this is Right. Okay, so this is where Guam is. I told you this is Japan and this is somewhere here. That's where Philippines is. So somewhere here. 
you see this is a very very dangerous area because china claims this as its area the south china sea all right which of the following is the name of the exercise held amongst nato countries so i told you about this nato countries se kahan pe ho raha hai nato countries ka exercise kahan pe ho raha hai अटलांटिक पे हो रहा है और नाम क्या उसका स्टेट फास्ट डिफेंडर रिमेंबर दिस नाइनटी थाउजेंड ट्रुप्स हैव बीन मोबलाइज इन दिस ऑल द नेटो कंट्रीज प्लस स्वीडन विच इज गोइंग टू बी एन एंट्री वेरी सून वन सामग्री से इज अस सो नेटो थर्टी वन मेंबर्स प्लस वन स्वीडन पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दिस ऑपरेशन द बिगेस्ट मोबलाइजेशन आफ्टर द कोल्ड वॉर राइट Okay, and I think this exercise is being done to send a very strong message to Russia, right? Okay, so that's NATO for you. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This was formed in the year nineteen forty-nine. The headquarters is in Brussels, which is Belgium. And the important thing about NATO is the Article Five. If you attack one country, the others are going to fight. you know for to help that country so war against one is a war against all so which means that let's say russia attacks poland which is a nato member then the others will also participate and it's a war against all of these 31 countries okay <clears throat> so finland is the latest country that uh, joined the nato and you should know that jen Stol stoltenberg is the secretary general of nato so the mandatory condition for being part of nato is that 2% of the gdp 2% of the gdp has to be spent on defense all right okay i hope you guys are understanding are you with me just answer in the chat box and i'll understand that you know you are understanding properly yes sir mm. ग्रीन टी सो आई होप अंडरस्टैंडिंग नो कमेंट्स प्रियंका आई थिंक यू शुड टेक ओवर ओके सो आई मेंशन अबाउट दिस सहयोग काइजी प्लीज शूट योर डाउट विल हेल्प यू आउट Okay, what about this exercise? I told you this is a exercise uh, of the coastal guards of India and which country? The answer would be the answer would be Japan, right? So India and Japan. The exercise is called Sayo Kaijin. Kaijin is the Japanese word. Sayo is the Indian word. Okay, so remember this exercise as well. Okay. The next one is Ayutthaya. I told you about it. Exercise Ayutthaya. Now this is the first edition, and it is the Indian Navy and the Royal Thai Navy, right? And why is it important? Is because uh, there are two the oldest cities. One is Ayodhya, and the other one is Ayutthaya in Thailand. So exercise Ayodhya, a uh, Ayutthaya. So remember that the first edition, right? Now. niti ayog does this so every year you know we have the state which is which has shown the maximum improvement uh, so the question here is which state has shown the maximum improvement in removing people out of the multi dimensional poverty now this report this uh, i mean stats is given by niti ayog so we are going to read about it later uh, atul uh, arvind pangodia he has become the 
chairman of the 16th finance commission he was earlier uh, the till 2012 he was in the niti ayog right so niti ayog remember this so they are the ones who are responsible for uh, this particular index so can you give me the answer here can you give me the answer here the answer would be tell me yes the answer is up so the order here is the state that is first is up and then we have bihar and then we have madhya pradesh though they are the poorest states that we have in india but uh, bihar madhya pradesh jharkhand but uh, they have shown maximum improvement up has shown maximum improvement right so um, so that's about it uh, nothing much here this data is by niti ayog and we are looking at the order here sharpest decline up has seen then is bihar and then is madhya pradesh we don't have to go much into details here because that will be too much okay then the next question here is the corruption perception index 2023 release what is india's rank here what is india's rank in the corruption perception index the answer will be 93 okay corruption index perception index india's rank is 93 so there is still a long way to go as far as we are concerned right and the best country so this is this report is released by the transparency international right they release this data no it's mukul it's not 83 it's 93 and the cleanest country in the world is denmark so if you look at it the countries that are clean they'll have this orange uh, yellowish yellowish thing so look at the countries here so we're talking about canada usa right parts of western europe australia so these are countries that are relatively clean countries right so western europe would have france germany and italy and you know uk uh, we're looking at the scandinavian countries here sweden uh, uh, finland norway right so iceland all these countries ireland these are countries which are you know uh, japan here which are uh you know the best ranked countries or least corrupt countries right so india is 93 so long way to go for the indians here yeah so we had this uh survey which is called 2024 global 500 it services ranking and which tata consultancy services uh, got what rank in this so my question to you is what did tcs what rank did tcs get amongst this it services uh, brand ranking so can you tell me and can you also tell me which country got the first rank and which country, which com which company got the first rank which company got the third rank so i would like to know the first second and third year. so here what is the answer to this question the answer would be second so tcs is second okay the country the best company in terms of uh, the the best company in terms of our uh, <clears throat> brand value is accenture right and the third bar bar company bol raha country bol raha the third company would be uh, is infosys okay so it's accenture tcs and then is infosys so tcs has which is an indian company has got second rank okay so remember that all right so yeah let's move on okay um some of the books some of the books we'll do that now who is the author of the book why bharat matters who is the author of this book the answer would be s jay shankar right s jay shankar is the author of the book why bharat matters next one who is the author of the book conversations with aurangzeb is charu nivedita right the second one 
author of the novel Conversations with Aurangzeb. Right. So this book typically is about, uh, you know, it's kind of a uh, if Aurangzeb, you know, um, if he comes out of the grave and they have a discussion, right? So what is his perception towards things? It's something like that. So Charu Nividita is the author of this particular book. Next one. Who authored the autobiography Time Spent Distance Travel? What is the answer to this? Okay, just keep a note of these books. So the first book that I mentioned was by Jay Shankar. The second is by Charu Nivedita. And the third one is Time Spent Distance Traveled is Justice Shivraj Patel. He is a former Supreme Court judge. Okay. Okay, author of the book Gandhi, A Life of Free Campaigns. Right. So the answer to this would be M.J. Akbar and Natwar Singh. So we've discussed four books. One is by Jay Shankar. Right. Quickly. S. Jay Shankar. The name of the book is Why Bharat Matters. The second one we did was Charu Nivedita, which is Conversations with Aurang Aurangzeb. You know, he was a great Mughal ruler. Right. Third is time spent distance travel former supreme court judge the answer is justice shivraj patel and the fourth one gandhi a life in three campaign the answer would be mj akbar and natwar singh all right so let's come to obituaries now priyanka are you there priyanka Okay, let's look at obituaries. Priyanka, if you're there, please join. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, am I audible to everyone? Am I audible to all of you? बेटा ऐसा है बहुत सारे तुम्हें तुमसे प्रश्न पूछे गए हैं जिसका उत्तर तुम्हें आता नहीं है लेकिन तुम लोग आंसर तो करो यार गलत ही सही आंसर तो करो पहली बात तो ये बताओ एम आई ऑडिबल और नॉट कम ऑन यू आर राइट ओके थैंक यू सर सो सर हैज स्पोकन अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ एक्सरसाइजेस मिलिटरी एक्सरसाइजेस व्हिच आर एक्सेप्शनली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू a lot of indices again if you look at the clad consortium sample papers of the previous year um, not the actual paper but at least the sample paper was talking about an index called the human development index and not only was it talking about the rank of india it was also talking about the kind of parameters that you take into account while giving that particular rank right so all of these things are exceptionally important and just because of the fact that previous year mein sports ka question nahi aaya doesn't mean sports is not important for you for many many reasons right the prime amongst them being that last to last year jo aspirants ke liye sabse zyada difficult tha with respect to gk had two passages with respect to sports right so sports is something that you absolutely cannot neglect but uh, what what we are going to talk about right now is a, a couple of exercises that are very very important so let's start up with the very first one this one is to do with the international purple fest now purple fest is a fest that is basically um, undertaken for pwds people with uh, disabilities ya fir agar hum log simple bhasha mein bole to specially abled bolte hain inko hai na <coughs> so which edition of the international purple fest took place in goa last year bhi goa mein hua tha is saal bhi goa mein hua tha and this is the second edition now i'd like to tell each and every student who's sitting um online and actually taking this session nobody is going to judge you if you get the answer incorrect we want you to at least try right ट्राई करके गलत करके अगर गलत भी हो गया तो भी हम लर्न ही कर रहे हैं वी आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम दिस सेशन सो यूज योर चैट बॉक एंड प्लीज आंसर यस सो दिस इज द सेकंड एक्सरसाइज इट इज इन गोवा एंड लाइक आई सेड दिस इज टू सेलिब्रेट द डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूसिविटी इन आर कंट्री एंड द ओपनिंग सेरेमनी हाईलाइट फीचरिंग द पर्पल एंथम टाइटल धूमल अब धूमल नहीं लर्न करना तो एटलीस्ट सेकंड एक्सरसाइज जरूर लर्न करो और ये मैंने आपको ऑलरेडी बता दिया दैट द वेरी फर्स्ट सेशन 
very first purple fest also took place in Goa in the previous year. Let's go on to the next one. Now, this particular one is talking about, now look at this, look at the way the question has been framed. Tumko ye bhi pata chal gaya ki ye ninth edition hai and ninth edition of the India International Science Festival. Now, you have to understand that the government of India is putting in a lot of effort and money into research and development, right? And so keeping that in mind, keeping in mind the fact that in the interim budget, Nirmala Sita Raman said that the fifth factor of production is digital public infrastructure, digital being the key word, right? And so hence, here they are asking us, ki kya is ka theme hai? Ab theme mein, agar mujhe kahin pe bhi Amrit Kaal dig gaya, and now please don't use it in each and everything, but mostly the themes are something in Amrit Kaal, right? So this is what is the theme of this particular ninth edition of the International Science Festival that took place in this particular year in the month of January. And this is where you have it. And this is by the Department of Science and Technology. Dr. Jitinder Singh ka naam abhi hamne learn nahi karna because the government... Um, might change, might not change. Point is that there are going to be Lok Sabha ka elections. Let them appoint the kind of ministers that they want to appoint and that's when we will learn the names. But as of now, this is what is important for us, extremely important, ki ye cheez is ka ninth edition tha, Department of Science and Technology thi, and this is the theme that was there. The next one is the National Youth Festival. Youth Festival, National Youth Day wale din manaya jata hai. Ab I'm going to wait and I'm going to ask you guys, please tell me, why is the 12th of January celebrated as um, National Youth Day? Kis insaan ke basis pe ye National Youth Day celebrate hota hai? Chalo, let me give you options. Um, Swami Vivekanand. Mahatma Gandhi, I give very bad options, by the way. So Mahatma Gandhi, then both or none. Chalo, come on. There are 26 students who are sitting. I want at least five, four or five answers. Come on, fada fit se. 12th of January, kyo celebrate hota hai? Fada fit se, aap batayenge meko. ko. Tabhi hum log aage badhenge, nahi toh hum log idhar hi baithenge. Meri life mein aur kuch nahi hai. Sirf mere paas ek cheez hai, tumko padhana. Mein idhar baith ke, char ghande tak tumko padha sakti hoon. Tum log likho ge yaan pe, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. There's John Diesel, Kavya, Harman, Mansirjan. Mansirjan has not written anything. She usually does. So come on. Let's do it, guys. Yes, so it is. Kiske? Yeah, thank you very much. This is Swami Vivekanand. Right? So now they are asking us what is the theme of the 27th National Youth Festival? And then what is important for us is where was it held? So this is in Nasik in Maharashtra. Ab yaha pe mujhe na ye wala option thik lag raha hai. Mujhe agar kuch bhi nahi aata, to mujhe pata 2047 is something that everyone's talking about. Vikasit Bharat to mene Republic Day ki parade mein bhi dekha hai. Right? So hence, you are absolutely correct there. That is what is the theme, Vikasit Bharat 2047. And of course, it was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Nobody is going to ask you this. But yes, you should know ideally that where was it celebrated. Let's go on to the next one. Now, this is to do with space. Again, space is something. Our, the 1st of January 2024 started with a space mission. Last year was all about our space. And yes, we did in fact get a question on Chandrayaan 3. So, Ye ideally, ideally hume pata hai ki expo Z ke upar bhi question pata hi aega hi aega. Right? So space is very, very important for us. Let's talk about this one. <coughs> now, which country has recently become the fifth country to land on the moon? Ab, uh, the answer is Japan. And I remember in our classes, we all spoke about it. Ki land to kar liya, lekin ulta land kar liya. Point is ulta land kiya ya sida land kiya, land to kiya. And so hence they become the fifth country to successfully land on the lunar surface. Right? So let's listen, uh, let's understand a little bit about it. Now, full forms is something that CLAT loves, right? A-Lit ko bhi bhoat pasand hai. To full forms humare liye bhoat zyada important hai. To SLIM is what is the name of the mission. This is a smart lander for investigating the moon. It's ideally, it is very, very easy to analyze it from the options. And that is exactly what we need to do. It is not a fill in the blank anyway. 
JAXA is the agency. This is the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. The nickname of the moon, uh, the lander. Lander kya hota hai? Jo surface, celestial body ke surface ke upar land kar deta, as the name suggests. This is what it is called. It is called the moon sniper. Now, yes, we can possibly be asked this question. कि ठीक है यहाँ पे पता है कि इंडिया तो लैंड किया है लेकिन इससे पहले कौन सी कंट्रीज थी तो सोवियत यूनियन एंड देन यूएस यूएस के ऊपर बहुत कंट्रोवर्सी है बट वी विल नॉट गेट इनटू दैट देन देयर इज चाइना देयर इज इंडिया एंड द फिफ्थ वन इज जॉक्सा इन फैक्ट द नेक्स्ट मिशन दैट वी विल अंडरटेक एज एज अ कंट्री इसरो इज गोइंग टू अंडरटेक इट विद जॉक्सा राइट सो दिस बिकम्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस लेट्स गो ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन Now, why are they asking us about U R Rao Satellite Center? Firstly, you have to understand, and I hope that you have watched the video with respect to the Mission Exposat. Mission Exposat, Exposat is basically a polarimetric mission. What is polarimetric mission? Very simple, si baat hai ki jo X rays hai, wo har disha mein ja rahi hai. They're going in every direction. forget x rays let's keep it simple if something is going in every direction i will not be able to understand it very well but the minute the same ray goes in a in the same direction it becomes a little easier for me to read to understand about that particular ray and that is exactly what is the polarimetry mission <laughs> so mission exposat is the x ray polarimetry satellite polarimeter is basically the study of the x ray while you know of course x ray is all over the place but you learn it and you read it in a way that it is in one direction in very simple language imagine you already had a camera but you could not focus the camera very well but with the exposat mission now you can focus it very well and you can study the x ray really well that is what is the mission this is india's first polarimetry mission and world ka second hai kyunki pehla nasa ka hai right okay so now launch vehicle is very very important for us right this is pslv c58 and previous clad paper mein bada simple sa prashn pucha tha pslv ka full form kya hai so while i you know talk about the rest of it you guys tell me pslv satellite launch vehicle to pata hai p stands for what please write it down come on everyone well done right so there are two payloads over here i'm still waiting p stands for what satellite launch vehicle we've understood p stands for what what does p stand for come on jasme vanya kavya mansurjan nasa and european agency kahan se aagi beta p kya what does it stand for is it i i i'm bad with options you have to tell me come on well done polar polar is the right answer so there are two payloads payloads ka matlab kya hota hai ki ek particular satellite ko jab hum log space mein bhej rahe hain to uske sath hum log kya dal rahe hain right so you know what are the components of that particular thing which are going to do whatever they have to do we are not scientists and we don't need to get into the nitty gritties of it but yes there are two payloads and the two payloads are called polex and expect polarimeter instrument and x rays and x ray spectroscopy and timing do we have to learn the full form of this particular thing well ideally you should i don't really think that they will ask you itna zyada detail mein par agar pooch bhi lenge to kya farak padta hai hame pata hai and you have to understand again i'm reiterating this fact ki ye fill in the blanks to hai hi nahi to keywords uthao and try to figure it out from the mcq so that you get your answer correct ठीक है ना हुआ क्या है कि ये पेलोड्स किसने बनाए हैं यू आर राव सैटेलाइट इज वाई आई आज दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन दैट व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ द डायरेक्टर ऑफ यू आर राव सैटेलाइट सेंटर एंड द आंसर इज एम शंकर राइट एंड द अदर काइंड ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूट दैट इज इन्वॉल्व इन दिस इंटायर मिशन एक्सपो सेट इज कॉल्ड रमन रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट अभी सर आपको कराएंगे सी वी रमन के बारे में और उनको सबसे ही वॉज द फर्स्ट रेसिपियंट ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर अवार्ड दैट इज वेरी मच इन न्यूज राइट नाउ सो उसी के नाम पे रमन रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट ईयर थैंकफुली क्लैट इज नॉट आस्किंग दिस you know over the past 2 3 years but kya pata next time pooch le to please keep it in mind right baki dono ke dono ka bangalore is the headquarter and the director is tarun sauradeep let's go on to the next one the next one being this okay 
Now let me keep it very, very simple. हुआ क्या है दैट लास्ट ईयर वी मेड अ स्पेस पॉलिसी जहां पे हमने बोला कि हमारे जो साइंटिस्ट हैं इसरो में हम उनको बोलेंगे कि यार तुम लोग ना डोंट लुक इन टू प्रोक्योरमेंट की कहा से लॉन्च वहीकल लेकर आना है कहा से सैटेलाइट लेकर आनी है कहा से इंजिन लेकर आना है यू डोंट लुक इन टू दैट यू जस्ट फोकस ऑन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट बिकॉज यू आर द शॉर्पेस्ट माइंड दैट वी गॉट इन दिस एंटायर कंट्री बाकी तुमको कुछ भी चाहिए टू फुलफिल योर मिशन वी विल मेक श्योर दैट वी गेट इट फॉर यू एंड सो हेन्स देर वॉज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट वॉज मेड दैट वॉज नोन एज The New Space India Limited, New Space India Limited, in very very simple language, is the commercial arm of ISRO. And why does ISRO need a commercial arm? Is because of the fact that I, as a scientist, need to sit down and I need to think about new kinds of missions, or I need to do research and development. I can't get into the like the normal administrative jobs. वो तो हम किसी से भी करवा लें, right? And hence हम लोगों ने किससे करवाया New Space India Limited. अब New Space India Limited ने एक announcement की है कि हम लोग किसके साथ काम करेंगे या किसके एक rocket को use करेंगे SpaceX के rocket को. चलो फटाफट से बताओ SpaceX किसका है? Who is that guy who owns SpaceX? He is not only the founder but also the chairman. Also, the chief technical officer, chief financial officer, chief executive officer, sab kuch wohi hai. Who is that guy? Come on, everyone. <coughs> Who is that chap who is running the show of SpaceX? It is none other than Elon Musk, right? So we have basically said that we are going to use your Falcon Nine rocket, and we are going to, you know, launch a satellite which is called the G Sat Twenty, G Sat N. जी सैट ट्वेंटी क्या करेगा इंटरनेट के फैसिलिटीज को और बेटर करेगा ब्रॉडबैंड की फैसिलिटीज को और बेटर करेगा सो ब्रॉडबैंड सैटेलाइट्स आर गोइंग टू गो इनटू स्पेस थ्रू द फाल्कन नाइन रॉकेट सो दैट इज व्हाट इज इन न्यूज इट हैज इंट हैपेंड येट वेल डन शुभ्रांशु एंड मनसर्जन एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ यू ऑल्सो शिवा मैन अच्छा क्यूटी ली ये क्या नाम है बेटा बहुत बढ़िया नाम है एनी anyway, So G Sat 20, G Sat N2, right? So 2024 में होगा कब होगा अब आपको भी पता है मुझे भी पता है कि स्पेस के मिशन एक बार अनाउंस करके कब होंगे वो हमें पता नहीं चलता है राइट बट वेल होगा एंड विच इज अ वेरी गुड थिंग द सेकेंड थिंग दैट वी नीड टू नो इज दैट दिस इज फैल्कन नाइन इज द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट रीयूजेबल रॉकेट रीयूजेबल बाकी सब छोड़ दो रीयूजेबल का मतलब तो पता ही है सो हेन्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव राइट सो नाउ एनसिल की बात करें न्यू स्पेस इंडिया लिमिटेड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस वॉज मेड इन दर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड इट इज दी हेडक्वार्टर इज इन बेंगलुरु मोस्ट ऑफ दर बेस्ड आउट ऑफ बेंगलुरु एंड द चीफ मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर इज राधा कृष्ण दुराई राज स्पेस एक्स लाइक यू जस्ट टोल्ड मी इज इलॉन मास्क कैलिफोर्निया से इसका हेडक्वार्टर है एंड इट वॉज मेड इन दर टू थाउजेंड टू अगेन आई एम सेन ईयर से ज्यादा इंसान के नाम के ऊपर फोकस ज्यादा करना है बट वेल इफ यू नो क्लैट वॉन्ट्स टू गिव यू गुगली देन यू शुड बी रेडी फॉर इट द नेक्स्ट वन इज योर इंटरनेशनल न्यूज नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट इंटरनेशनल न्यूज लेट्स लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ इट बहुत सारी इंटरनेशनल न्यूज है एंड द प्राइम अमंग्स बी देम बीन अब हमें पता ही है सेवेंथ अक्टूबर को किसने किस पे अटैक किया चलो बताओ सेवेंथ अक्टूबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री को किसने किस के ऊपर अटैक किया देर वॉज एन अटैक ऑन द सेवेंथ ऑफ अक्टूबर इट इज ऑल्सो लाइक इन टू अ वॉर कॉल द योम किपुर वॉर सो हु अटैक हुम फटाफट कम ऑन कम ऑन कम ऑन कम ऑन वी नो इट लेट्स डू इट दैट इज वॉट दिस पर्टिकुलर फंड स्टैंड फॉर यू एन आर डब्ल्यू ए मतलब आंसर आ गया हाँ पैलेस्टीन पैलेस्टीन की जगह हम हमास बोलेंगे तो थोड़ा सा बेटर लगेगा यू नो इट वाज हमास दैट अटैक इज़राइल एंड देन वेल ऑल हेल ब्रोक लूज एंड वी आर ऑल अवेयर ऑफ दैट नाउ दे आर आस्किंग अस व्हाट इज व्हाट इज इट स्टैंड फॉर यूनाइटेड नेशन यूएन तो हमें पता ही है रिलीफ एंड वर्क एजेंसी फॉर पैलेस्टीन रेफ्यूजीज इन द नियर ईस्ट हुआ क्या है दैट ये पर्टिकुलर एक रिलीफ फंड है जिसमें बहुत सारी कंट्रीज पैसा डाल रही है अब उन्होंने मना कर दिया पैसा डालने से इवन द वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज यू नो दे हैव सेड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू पुट इन मनी व्हाई 
बिकॉज इसराइल इज सेइंग कि जो कंट्रीज इसमें पैसा डालती है उन्ही कंट्रीज ने सेवेंथ अक्टूबर के अटैक को फंड किया है इट इज बिन अलेज बिकॉज ऑफ विच दे है लिटिल बिट अबाउट इट द यू एन आर डब्ल्यू ए Uh, was formed in 1949 it is the same year of the formation of nato maybe you can learn it like that and the commissioner general is philip um, lazarini whatever is the pronunciation baat laga di hum logo ne naam ki but hardly matters acha the next one is my very very uh, personal favorite we all know about this we know that you know our prime minister narendra modi goes to lakshadweep gets a photo clicked and एक कंट्री को प्रॉब्लम हो जाती है बताओ कौन सी कंट्री है और क्यों प्रॉब्लम होती है मतलब मेरा प्रधानमंत्री अगर मेरे देश के एक यूटी में जाके अपनी फोटो खिंचा रहा है तो किसी और को क्या प्रॉब्लम है बताओ प्रॉब्लम क्या है और वो कंट्री कौन सी है फटाफट से बताओ लेट्स डू इट वी नो इट आई नो यू नो इट वी बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट इट इन क्लास it is the maldives right so the maldives seems to have an issue maldives doesn't have an issue maldives ki political theory do tarike ki hai one says india is very nice one says india is really bad now the guy who is heading maldives right now the president muzo he sort of says india out policy are he is the first president to go and visit china instead of going and visiting india and india is one of the first countries to recognize maldives and so they believe ki whatever be the case they believe that china is a little better ab wo buddhu hai bechare kyun buddhu hai ye sab chhod do abhi 2 minute mein aate hai pehle isko dekho ye raha hamara pyara china aur ye kya kar raha hai it is trying to create something called the string of pearls and ye har jagah se kahin na kahin kya karta hai it's a very simple thing gets into agreements give these countries a lot of money the countries are not able to pay back take the territory right yesterday years mein modern history mein hum ek doctrine of subsidiary alliance padte the agar aata hai to aata hai nahi aata hai to baad mein karenge point is history repeats itself this is what is the string of pearls and who is doing all of this this is mohammad muzo and he is a believer of india out policy right and uh, he has also removed indian military and well he has also you know taken into account uh, he has gone to china and he has made close to 20 security pacts with china abhi operation cactus karke main kyu pooch rahi hu because of the fact that i want to tell you that not so long ago there was an attempt to remove the president of maldives and you know who helped them to avert that particular thing that was the government of india and the operation that was that that was taken uh, that took place in order to do that was called operation cactus right so operation cactus was there in 1988 my bad i'll just do it over yeah so it was called it was in 1988 and it was a military coup attempt uh, to to remove the president mamun abdul gayum right agar ye india se pooch raha hai to ye india ko favor hi karta hoga acha india ka prime minister kaun tha is time pe mr rajiv gandhi right and we were successful in that so keeping that in mind firstly let's do these questions so operation cactus was a military intervention by india in which country so this is very very simple this is the maldives the next one being who is the current administrator of lakshadweep sahi jagah pe tick laga hai apne aap hi praful khoda patel right so he is the one who is the administrator of this particular union territory fine and then we saw a lot of our celebrities also saying that maldives bahut bahut badhiya hai and yes this was rajiv gandhi absolutely correct well done let's go on to the next one ab emmys emmys is really really interesting to ye bahut sari categories mein jata hai hum log baki sab ki baat nahi kar rahe hum apne bande ki baat kar rahe hain ek to is baar 51st um international emmy awards mein um television category mein ek to special prize diya hai ekta kapoor ko uh, i don't know whether you like her or not point is she got that particular honor and in the best comedy series there's something called derry girls absolutely very very nice but you don't have the time to watch it so i have watched it on your behalf i'm telling you it's damn nice and the second one is our very own meerda so both 
is the answer to this. This is very, very important. Let's go on to the next one. Democratic Republic of Congo ka president. Beta, aise type ke sawal pooche ja sakte hai. These are low-hanging fruits. Ye aapko aane hi chahiye. Right? Pooche bhi ja sakte hai. Answer yaha pe kya hai? Felix. Ab maine is bande ka first naam hi learn kiya hai. Kyunki iska surname na mujhe pronounce karna aata hai, na mujhe likhna aata hai, na mujhe jaanna hai. Now the point is, again I'm saying the same thing. MCQs hai, you just have to figure it out from the MCQs. Felix is something that I have learned because... Well, I read Harry Potter and I have. Point is that that is the answer over here. Theek hai, agar hum log Democratic Republic of Congo ki baat kare, to capital, prime minister, and of course the president is very, very important because he was appointed in this particular year. To ye hum log dhyan mein rakhenge. Let's go on to the next one. India will be hosting which edition of UNESCO's World Heritage Committee? Uh, is uh, sir, would you like to take this up? But I think sir is not here. Okay, so India will be hosting which edition of UNESCO's World Heritage Committee? The answer is 45th. Let's understand a little bit about it. Now, UNESCO, UNESCO ka full form. Now, United Nations to pata hi hai. Scientific and Cultural Education theek hai. Ye E stands for what? Economic or Educational? Write it down. Economic or educational? Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Galatua, galatua, sahiwa, sahiwa, nobody is judging you. E stands for what? Economic or educational? Ah, 46, tha? my bad. Shubhranshu is correct. 45th, to Riyadh mein tha, ma'am. Sahi baat hai. Economic education. So I've got one economic. Oh, I've got Devka. Of course, small Devs. Okay, thanks. Huh? So educational, economic, education, economic. So I've got like three education and two economic. Boss, hey, kya? what is the answer? Economic education. Education is correct. Now, this particular organization, what it does is, it goes around, you know, uh, basically it identifies world heritage sites, right? There are tangible heritage sites and then there are intangible heritage sites. What does it mean ki agar usne Jaipur ko heritage site bol diya? That doesn't mean that UNESCO is going to give them a lot of money. It basically means that it has identified that this particular country has this place which is amazing, right? It, it is a heritage site. So a person may be sitting in Germany when he wants to come to India, he will... If in case he doesn't know anyone from India, he will look at the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and he'll be like, Achha, tike, yeah, this is the place that I want to go to. That means this is bringing us a lot of foreign exchange. Ab hu, hua kya hai? That ye World Heritage Committee, jo hai, this is the one that decides ki kaun si heritage site honi chahiye. Where should the heritage site be? And well, India will host the 46th session. And that is why this becomes exceptionally important for you. So, every year we give nominations. Like the last year we gave another nomination. Right? Our Hoysala Temple was our temple. Right? This time it is the Maratha military landscape that we have nominated. Has it become the heritage site till now? No, it hasn't. But will it? We'll, let's wait and watch. So, a little bit about UNESCO. In 1945, it was made. And Paris may is the headquarter here. The director general is Audrey Osley. And India has 42 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and 15 intangible heritage sites. And that becomes your homework, guys. What is the homework then? Pehli heritage site konsi thi India ki or latest heritage site konsi hai India ki ye aap khud karenge. Thik hai, kuch to aapko khud bhi karna chahiye taki aap isko revise kar sake. So that is important for us. Right, okay. Um, this is what is the Maratha military landscape. 
it has been fortified really really properly like chhatrapati shivaji was known for this in fact chhatrapati shivaji was known for his naval um you know uh, tacts like he was amazing at his naval warfare is why his ensign has been used by the indian navy right so if we keep this in mind yahi hame pata hona chahiye maratha military landscape hai 12 iske components hai and किसने इसको इंसेप्शन किसने किया था छत्रपति शिवाजी ने किया था और पेशवास के रूल तक ये चलता था अब ये बनेगा नहीं बनेगा हमें नहीं पता बट वी विल स्टिल कीप रीडिंग द न्यूज़पेपर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द सेम ऑल राइट ओके सो लेट्स डू इट या ओके लेट्स गो अहेड द नेक्स्ट वन इज हु इज द फर्स्ट यंगेस्ट एंड फर्स्ट ओपनली गे प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ फ्रांस तुक्का मारो चलो आंसर बताओ तुक्का मारो कम ऑन जासमे एवरी वन मर्सिजन क्वेश्चन मार्क क्वेश्चन मार्क वट्स द क्वेश्चन बेटा बताओ हु यंगेस्ट एंड द फर्स्ट ओपनली गे प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ फ्रांस Gabriel is correct. Well done. I knew you knew it. Anyway, so this is right. सही बात बोल रहे हैं. Let's go ahead. चलो ये करो. ये हमने क्लास में भी किया है. And don't tell me कि नहीं किया है. Who is the first female secretary general of the World Meteorological Organization? Come on. The first female. Interim budget में चार कास की बात हुई थी. उसमें से एक नारी थी. नारी is very very important. this year okay so the first female to head anything becomes important come on let's do it wow kavya has also told me the age ha huh? come on guys come on we've done this okay to come aro doesn't matter to come aro kon lagta hai tumko is the first female to head the world meteorological organization neetu is correct shubhranshu is correct the rest of you come on come on come on let's do it nobody is judging you no one cares whether you're getting it right or wrong but the minute you get it wrong or you get it right let me tell you you will you will know it you will remember it for the rest of your life of course educational ye devka thoda sa late karti hai message and and she always writes with educational it's educational ma'am you don't teach in prayag raj well darling i teach on online and i teach everyone and i will definitely come and meet you and we i will teach you but i already teach you every day daily newspaper analysis right yes so celeste is correct this is absolutely right so this is the world meteorological organization that's the female right 1950 mein ye cheez bani thi geneva switzerland mein iska headquarter hai President is Abdullah Al Mandos from UAE. Secretary General, very very important because she started her term from the first of January, and the World Meteorological Day is the twenty third of March. Twenty third of March को मेरे बिना बोले हुए आपने जाके देखना है कि इसका थीम क्या है दो हजार चौबीस का क्योंकि वो आपसे पूछा जा सकता है. ठीक है? Okay. Batch one की class. I I I miss you too, Mansurjan. but i'm always here baby okay so now the next one is suez canal officially opened now why am i talking about the suez canal chalo tell me that suez canal to itna news mein hai nahi par ek c news mein hai jahan pe attacks ho rahe hain koi to attack kar raha hai kon attack kar raha hai aur uh, you know what is happening come on tell me Why am I talking about the Suez Canal? It is not even in news, right? But is it? Is it in news? And if it is in news, why is it in news? Operation Rafa is correct. That's nice. Operation Rafa. की बात कर रहे हो. Operation Rafa. Okay, because वो Egypt के साथ border कर रहा है. और बताओ Red Sea, Houthi types. Very good. Very good. 
All right. So this is 1869 is when it was officially opened. And what does the Convention of Constantinople guarantee about the Suez Canal? Ki chahe peace time ho, chahe war time ho. It will open up for everyone. Wo log mante nahi hai, wo log baat hai. Achha, 2021 mein kya hua tha? There was this ship called Ever Given that sort of, you know, blocked the entire canal. And that was like a problem that took place in 2021. Houthi movement ka head kaun hai? Dekho yaar, ye to Houthi nahi bol rahe, ye bhi nahi bol rahe, ye hoga, ye ye hoga. Batao kaun hai? To kam aro chalo, kam on. Doesn't matter whether it is right or wrong. It has to be Houthis, right? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. I'm giving you a chance to answer. Sorry. <laughs> giving you a chance to answer. Mansarjan A ki to. Acha B B lik diya Mansarjan ne. Abdul hai ki Hussein hai. Tukka maro doesn't matter. Sahi hoga, sahi hoga, galat hoga, sahi kar denge. Thik? So the answer is Hussein. He was the founder and this chap is heading it right now after his uh, assassination, death, whatever you'd like to call it. What is the name of the United States-led military operation that was conducted to respond to the Houthi attacks? Jasme, you need to answer this and the rest of you also because we've done this. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hussein. Hussein is here. Sahi baat hai. Bataye. Neetu ka answer sahi hai. So it is Operation Prosperity Guardian. That is what it is called. Please keep this in mind. This is very important. Achha, agar hum iski baat kare. Ye ho gaya tumhara Red Sea. Ye ho gaya tumhara Yemen. Jahan pe hai tumhare Houthi. Na? And they are backed by another country called Iran, which is not seen here, that's a different thing. Now, this is the straight, here is the most attacks on here. Although it is not visible here, there is another straight, straight of Hormuz, which is what India is using on today's date for trade. And this is happening because of the fact that the Houthis apparently are attacking uh, ships that are favoring Israel. But then they say Ki, are, are, they are attacking anyone and everyone. Now, Houthis are not telling me whether they are attacking Israel-backed ships or otherwise. Point is that that is what is the narrative. And we need to know about it. Hai? So this is what is important for us. Yes, you did answer. And you got it correct. Well done. Aja, who assumed the position of the Secretary General of the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral and Technical and Economic Cooperation in Dhaka? Now, listen to me from my attention. What is written? Bay of Bengal, there will be some countries in the Bay of Bengal. Right? They are doing a lot of sectoral, technical and economic cooperation. अच्छा वहाँ पे एक इंसान को सेक्रेटरी जनरल बनाया है। कितना टाइम? Yes sir. Priyanka. Yes sir. Can I can you just go back to the previous uh, slide? Yes sir. The previous slide. The one which has the map. Yes sir. Just a second. हाँ जी. So I think one thing very important which Priyanka ma'am mentioned here was if you look at this particular strait from the Mediterranean Sea, taking the Suez Canal, and uh, this there is a very important strait which is, uh, you know, which is between Yemen and the Horn of Africa where you have Djibouti, Somalia, and that's called the Bable Manab Strait. That's a choke point, right? So that's it's very at its shortest. Uh, Point it is about 25 kilometers uh, width, and it goes still about 50 kilometers. So this is where the Yemen's uh, Yem the Houthis are uh, attacking, and it goes to the Gulf of Aden to the Arabian Sea. So this is a very very 
sensitive part. That's why a choke point. And that's where you're having most of these attacks. And that's the reason, you know, it's a US-led, uh, uh, you know, the mission, which is Prosperity Garden, uh, to look after the, the ships which are moving in this direction, right? Yeah, Priyanka, move on. Yes, sir. So I think we'll uh, go on to the last one because before I, I, I go on to this one, I'd like to make an announcement that guys, whatever we are teaching you here is a part of our magazine called GK Perfect, right? And the GK Perfect magazine will be available on your learning management system, the LMS, as well as on your Telegram by the 18th of February. So you will have all of this information. You do not need to feel that, you know, kuch miss out ho gaya ya jo bhi hai. This was basically to apprise you of the fact that a lot is happening around you. And this is how you need to prepare for your examination. This is the approach that you need to take. So you don't worry. There is no fear of missing out. You will, you will get everything in the GK Perfect magazine as always. And you will get it by the 18th of February on your respective platforms. So this is the last topic that I will take up. And then we will call it a day. Okay? Chalo. So who assumed the position of the Secretary General of BIMSTEC? Now, BIMSTEC what is it? I'll tell you a little bit first. Okay, it is. Okay. So this is basically an organization that consists of a lot of countries. The countries are Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Right, there's Myanmar, Bhutan, as well as Nepal. Fine. So current member states kitne hai saath hai. Or ye kis chis kile bane hai? Why have they been made for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation? Now you just have to tell me, and I know that you don't know it, but it doesn't matter. Maybe you know it. Vaise, I don't want to have preconceived notions. You tell me who is going to be the answer. Should we write this down or not? Cute lie. Pehle to meko cute lie ka naam bata. Cute lie. What is cute lie? I'm sure you have a wonderful name and I'd like to know that. Right? Nahi mat likho na. GK Perfect ki magazine mein sab kuch ho gai. Yaha pe to tum log answer kar rahe the. Tumhe pata chal raha tha ki kis tarikhe se tumhe questions banane chahiye. Tumne jo likha hai usme koi galti bhi nahi hai. Because let me tell you what you have learned today. You're going to remember it. Right? So it doesn't matter whether you've written it or not. If you've written it well and well done, start learning it. But even if in case you feel that you've missed out on something, you will anyway get it in the GK Perfect magazine. Right? Okay. Chalo, A Tukka Mansarjan ka agya, Neetu ka agya. Baki batao. Tukka tumara bhoti badiya bana hai yaar. Va, va. Mene lik liya. So, okay, it's very big. So, Jasmine, I'll ask you tomorrow. I'll ask you questions tomorrow. Okay? Okay. So, flashcards are available in the magazine. <laughs> I'll give you flashcards. I'll give you everything you learn to learn, boss. Okay? You'll get everything you get. But if you don't learn, then what will we do? Okay? So, this is Indra Mani Pandey is absolutely correct and I think that is that. Uh, that is that from my end. So, I would like you guys to keep up the momentum, keep studying very, very hard and and maybe you, your perspective towards general knowledge and current affairs should have changed today uh, because, you know, maybe some of us are not really, uh, we're reading the newspaper, but we don't know exactly what to learn from it. So the way Sir has taken up the sports section and the military exercises and the way he has brought together all of the points, that is very, very important. Because one is to learn hardcore facts, one is to learn hardcore logic. Learn karna. So, you know, I'm sure you will never forget the fact that the snow leopard and, you know, the senses and the way Sir has explained or the way we've put up these questions. So learn all of that up. And Baki, you revise it from your GK Perfect magazine. So I think that is that. Ma'am, learning every day. Hoping to see you in the offline soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So I think, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm there, Priyanka. Yes, sir. So if you'd like to say something, sir, I think I'm done from my end because. Okay, yeah, you have to carry on also and close the office. It's too late there. 
<laughs> so Priyanka, I, you know, I'll just um, like to just add a couple of things. The last slide that you were taking. So BIMSTEC we have done now. So yes. the countries that are part of BIMSTEC. Um, right. So yes. let's just quickly do the countries that are part of BIMSTEC. So one is the headquarters is in Bangladesh. Right. And uh, we have uh, Thailand, Bangladesh, Myanmar, India, Sri Lanka, right? And there are two countries that do not, I mean, they don't, uh, they're not part of Bay of Bengal. I mean, the so that is Nepal and Bhutan. Remember that. Okay. And the headquarters is in Dhaka. Right. So there's one, just one last thing that I wanted to discuss with you is about the SEO. And um, okay, so about the BRICS summit, I'm sorry. The BRICS summit is going to be in a place called Kazan, which is in Russia, because now Russia has taken over the uh, the chair. They It was first offered to Brazil, but then since they have the G20 this year, they passed it on and Russia has uh, taken over as the as a chair of the the BRICS, right? And uh, this year in BRICS, uh, five countries have been added. So can you tell me what the answer would be here? What will be the answer quickly? The answer over is the. What will be the answer? The, the countries that have joined the BRICS this year, so we have two from Africa, right? We have two from Africa, that is <clears throat> Egypt and Ethiopia. So two from Africa. Egypt and Ethiopia. And then we have three from the Middle East, which is Iran, Saudi Arabia, right? Iran, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. Remember that. So these five countries have uh, joined the BRICS. So in total, we have five new members. So BRICS now, which was earlier, B-R-I-C-S, now we have five more countries. So when it started off, it was just B R I C, right? Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Th this was started in the year 2009. And a year after that, South Africa joined. So there were five countries. So now this, on the 1st of January, officially these five countries have joined. And Russia is going to chair it. And uh, it is going to be held in Kazan which is in Russia. It's about, I think, 300 kilometers from Moscow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think I've covered this. Yeah. So the motto is important. Strengthening multilateralism for equitable growth, development, and security. So they can give you options. What is the motto uh, of BRICS Summit? So strengthening multilateralism for equitable growth, global development and security. So you should know it. Okay. All right. Uh, so now this event was quite important. Achha, one thing I want to tell you is that BRICS may in one or country ko invite kiya tha. But when the new Prime Minister I had I to unhone usko reject kar diya. Can you tell me in the chat box which country was it? A core country joined Kanne Wali the BRICS, mein, but wo fir aai nahi because Usko uh, unki president ne reject kar diya. Oh, kaha ki president hai? Millers kar ki unka naam hai, kaha ki president hai? The answer would be, tell me, the answer would be Argentina. So they were also invited, but then they said, thank you. Amini join Kanna. All right, so now this event is important, which is called. 10th edition of Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit. So this event was held in January 
inaugurated by the prime minister yes inaugurated by the prime minister so can you tell me what the answer would be the answer to this would be gateway to the future why is this um uh, this addition of vibrant gujarat global summit important is a you had uh, many leaders across the world coming the czech prime minister was there uh, the president of uae and even the head of the general assembly right so that that's why it was important uh, so the theme is gateway to the future uh, and that's about it so that's done okay now this is again a very important thing you know just keep track of news which is related to the inland waterways right now i don't know if you know this that now through various the inland water channels from you can travel from banaras through the ganges and once it enters into brahmaputra uh, into bangladesh and then from there to dibrugarh so the entire kilo, the entire distance would be about 3200 km so you're doing about 3200 km you know from varanasi to dibrugarh so just keep track of this news and uh, so last year about 51 swiss nationals had traveled all the way from banaras to dibrugarh right so this goes you take the ganges so start from banaras and then it goes to patna bhagalpur goes to farakka then that breaks into to padma and hubli you take the hubli then close to sagar the through the inland channel it moves you know into bangladesh joins meghna river there and then from there you know through various inland waterways it reaches dibrugarh so just that's important now the meeting was held where the meeting was held in calcutta so the first edition of inland waterways development council meeting was held in calcutta right also remember because we are discussing about calcutta calcutta mein abhi bahut important event hua tha ek uska naam hai ganga sagar mela ganga sagar mela so this is done around 14 15 january right and it is one of the biggest festival it's actually a harvest festival and uh, sagar dwip is the area where this is done so sagar dwip is the area where uh, the hugli river you know enters into the bay of bengal so that region is called the sagar dwip area and you basically uh, you know pay respect to lord shiv right and this is the second biggest festival after the kumbh mela so ganga sagar mela remember it since we are discussing about you know that area west bengal you should know ganga sagar mela so this was an important news of january all right now since we have just discussed about the north eastern side also remember that of as arunachal pradesh has got a gi tag right arunachal pradesh has got gi tag for three things right i want you to research and find out i'll just give a little hint about it the gi tag so recently gi tags has been given to a few products of arunachal pradesh so one of them is a tibetan carpet second is uh, it's called kekri which is ginger and i might get the pronunciation wrong but actually it's ginger right and uh, there is one more which is uh, the wooden uh, work which is called wushu or something right so just figure out there are three products so in the later slides we might just mention about it but it will get too late so uh, do research about it so three things from uh, gujarat from odisha also uh, a product has got a gi tag and uh, that is called the red ant chutney right uh, red ant chutney from odisha that's got a gi tag right and from gujarat you have um, in simple words uh, their dates right which is around the kutch area 
that has got a GI tag, GI tag again. And this is after the Gir mangoes of Gujarat. You have got the dates of Gujarat. Uh, they've got the tag, right? So the name, actual name and all is all mentioned, right? So again, since Assam came, uh, recently, the Assam government gave the Gaurav Samman, Gaurav Samman to uh, the, the former Chief Justice of India, uh, Mr. Gagoi, right? So he was given the Gaurav Samman in Assam. All right. So Inland Waterways is done. Yes. So which union territory became the first to implement the PM Vishwa Karma Yojana? Now, this was very much in news. So can you tell me which union territory became the first to implement Vishwa Karma Yojana? So this is important. Vishwa Karma Yojana, a scheme aimed at providing end-to-end -end support to artisans and crafts people. So it gives them some seed money to buy the equipments and also gives them some kind of remuneration. Right. So the state which is the first state to implement is answer. What would be the answer? The answer would be Jammu and Kashmir is the first state to implement the Vishu Karma Yojana. Okay. Next one. So again, you show it's a central sector scene. And uh, so you get a daily stipend of 500 rupees and some toolkit worth about 15,000 and some soft loans and you get some marketing assistance and this is under the Ministry of MSME, right? All right. And uh, so again, CV, there was a civil uh, conference head and what was the state that was involved here? Can you tell me? CV. CV. Seaweed conference on for the cultivation of seaweed. The answer would be Koteshwar Kach Gujarat. So this would be the answer for seaweed. Okay, remember this. Next, so I'm just taking it in MCQ style now. Uh, Okay, next one is, just take a couple of them. Yes, so this is again very important. Uh, read about Pradhan Mantri Suradaya Yojana, which was launched by the government. It's basically to install 10 million solar panels, you know, in the house, across the houses, right? So we are looking at one crore houses that will have a rooftop solar panel. All right, so this one is important. And okay, so I uh, I did the snow leopard thing with you. The number is the exact number is 780, and the maximum is in Ladakh, which is around 477. So this is the snow leopard. Okay. Kyrgyzstan has adopted this as a national uh, symbol. Okay. Now, this one is important. It's called the Atal Setu. This was launched by the Prime Minister last month. And uh, you need to tell me what is the distance and kilometers. So, the answer to this would be uh, it's about 20.8, 21.8 kilometers. And this basically connects the Navi Mumbai to uh, to South Bombay, right? So uh, a very important answer would be B here, 21.8 kilometers, out of which 16.5 kilometers is over the sea, right? So it's from Savory to Nayashera, right? So that is the distance that it covers. Effectively, it is from Navi Mumbai to South Bombay, right? Okay, so it's mentioned here. This is important news. So that's why I wanted to tell you about it. From Savory to Chile, which is in Bombay, the length is 621.8 kilometers and it's a six-lane bridge, 16.5 kilometers is on the sea. 
right? It's the longest bridge in India and country's longest sea bridge. So remember about this Atal Setu. It's Nyaya Shera Sea Link. Okay. Uh, maximum funding has been done by Japan International Cooperation Agency and the rest by the state government. Okay. Yeah, so one thing is the 16th Finance Commission and uh, Mr. Arvind Panagriya, he is the chairman of the 16th Finance Commission. Right? Not a function of the Finance Commission. So basically, what is the Finance Commission doing here? Finance Commission is basically responsible for the division of the tax revenue between the center and the state. Okay. So he is the first vice chairman of Niti Aayog and he is also a Padma Bhushan awardee. Okay. Mr. Arvind Panagriya. Yeah, so GI tag I wanted to mention. Arunachal Pradesh is a Wancho wooden craft, the GI tag. What is GI tag? It is basically used to denote a product is from a certain geography. Remember that, from a certain geography, right? Arunachal Pradesh, Wancho, Adi Kekar. So these are two products which have got the GI tag. Forget about West Bengal. What I'm interested is in Gujarat, Kachini, Karek, which is basically a date, right? So this is a date. And from Odessa, you have the red ant chutney. Okay, that has also got a GI tag. Can you tell me in the comment box which uh, was the first product in India to get a GI tag? Okay, can you just tell me quickly which was the first product in India? It got a GI tag in 2004. Okay, the answer is the Darjeeling tea. So in 2004, it got a GI tag. Okay, so it's got a certain geography. I mean, whenever it's GI tag, it will be respected to a certain place. Next, Bharat Ratna, first award, 1900 and which year? Tell me. Yeah, absolutely. So Bharat Ratna, which year? The answer will be 1954. So you'll see this year, we have five Bharat Ratna, if you include February. So in January, in January, no, Uruguay is not part of BRICS. In January, we had Mr. Karpuri Thakur, who was also known as the Jan Nayak, right? He was chief minister of Bihar twice, a social worker. So he got, he got the posthumously, the Bharat Ratna Award. And then we had four more people. Who are these people? So that we'll include in February. But I'm just telling you, one is M.S. Swaminathan, the father of Green Revolution. And the others were politician, out of which one is living, which is Mr. L.K. Adwani, who was the one who started the Andolan in 1991, the Ram Bhumi Andolan, and uh, the Riyat Ratya. And besides this, you have... Uh, P.V. Narsimha Rao, who, uh, you know, was the Prime Minister of India in 1991 when we went into a serious debt trap and he got us out of it with the great finance minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, right? Okay, so we have the former Prime Minister. So how many people have been honored with the Bharat Ratna? What is the answer to this question? Yes, absolutely. So we have, the answer would be five here. So Karpuri Thakur, L.K. Adwani, plus Chaudhary Charan Singh, plus uh, 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 P.V. Narsimha Rao, and plus M.S. Swaminathan, right? plus M.S. Swaminathan. Okay, by the way, so recently in January again, there was this award given, uh, which is also called as M.S. Swaminathan Award. 
in January, there was this award given, which is also called as MS Swaminathan Award, right? And who got this MS Swaminathan Award? In the comment box, I want to know the answer. What, who got the MS Swaminathan Award? Okay, just the way to remember is that Swami Lok Boj Bhoj Jada Ajata. So it's, I think, B. R. Kamboj, okay, the Vice Chancellor of Haryana University. And uh, he got the M.S. Swaminathan Award. It's important, M.S. Swaminathan Award. And the answer is B. R. Kamboj, the Vice Chancellor of the Haryana University. All right. So he got the M.S. Swaminathan Award. So M.S. Swaminathan Award is given for excellence in agrarian research right okay just a bit about bharat ratna the first recipient was c rajagopal achari radha krishnan and c v raman right and uh, the first person to be honored posthumously was lal bahadur shastri our second prime minister and uh, yeah that's about it So there's a list of people I've already mentioned. Karpuri Thakur, L. K. Advani, Chaudhary Charan Singh, P. V. Narsimha Rao, and M. S. Swaminathan. So remember that because Bharat is important now. Okay. So this time, four French nationals have received the Padma Awards. So total we had 132 Padma Awards. Four French nationals have been Awarded. How many Padma Vibhushan Awards this year? How many Padma Vibhushan Awards? So we had five Padma Vibhushan Awards this year. So this is highest in the category of the Padma Awards. And who are the people who got it? So we had three actors in this. One is Chiranjeevi. The second, uh, uh, Vijanti Mala Bali. And... Uh, the third, uh, so we have three actors and uh, yeah, Vajanti Mala Bali, Chiranjeevi, we have uh, Padma Subramanyam, which she is a Bharat Natyam dancer. So founder of Sulab, Bindeshwar Pathak, he has got it posthumously and uh, Venkatesh Naidu, who was a former, uh, you know, uh, this thing, uh, vice president of India. So so, Vajanti Mala Bali, actress, Chiranjeevi actress, and uh, uh, public affairs, Venkatesh Naidu, Venkatesh Naidu, and we have social worker, uh, the founder of Sulab Sochalya, Bindeshwar Pathak, and Padma Subramanyam, who is a classical dancer, Bharat Natyam dancer. So, the, the, if you look at the category, remember the numbers. They can ask you how many Padma Awards were given, and the options could be given 110, 115. So, the answer will be 132. Vibhushan is 5 and Padma Bhushan is 17. Okay. Right. So which ed edition of Republic Day was it? This was the 75th edition. C option. 75th edition. What was the theme of Republic Day? Can you answer? What was the theme of Republic Day? I want the answers. The theme of the 2024 Republic Day. What was the theme? The theme was Viksit Bharat and Bharat Lok Tantriki Matruka. So the answer would be both of them. Okay, the theme was right. So this is the theme. Okay, so who was the, uh, which country did the chief guest of the first Republic Day? So when we had the first Republic Day, who was the chief guest then? It was the, chief guest belonged to which country? Any answer? The answer would be Indonesia, right? The first Republic Day that we had. In fact, I also wanted to tell you that uh, we only started having the 
Republic Day from the present, uh, you know, the present Rajghat, only from year 1954. So the first uh, 1955, if I'm not mistaken, the first four uh, Republic Days were at different location. So just find out about it. And, um, right, who received the award for best marching contingent as per the panel of judges? What is the answer to this question? The best. Yeah, the best marching contingent was Sikh Regiment. Right? So, a couple of important things about Republic Day. One, that the present Kartavya Path or Rajghat, where the Republic Day is held, it started happening here from 1955. Right? The first four Republic Days were at different locations, if you do a research about it. Second is that uh, the, the theme of the Republic Day, like I mentioned, it is Viksit Bharat and Bharat Lok Tantra Ki Matruka. Third, we need to know this. The first Republic Day that we have, the chief guest was a president of Indonesia in the year 1950. Right? And uh, best marching, marching contingent, the auxiliary forces was the Delhi Police women contingent. Okay? Also remember that the Delhi Police Women Contingent. And uh, okay, now which state avenue was just the best in the popular choice category? Popular choice. So what is the answer to this? So there were two categories, right? One was a judges category and the other one was a popular choice. So in the popular choice, can you give me the answer here? In the popular choice, so in the popular choice, it was Gujarat, right? And in the judges' choice, it was, and judges' choice was Odessa, right? So remember that Odessa was judges. And Gujarat was popular, right? Okay. Now remember a few things regarding the um, regarding the Republic Day. So I made a compilation here. The best marching contingent in other forces category, judges. This is Delhi Police women marching contingent. Right, I already mentioned that to you. The next one is uh, the best tableau in ministries or department category is the Ministry of Culture. Right, so department wise, it was Ministry of Culture, and the theme of this was Bharat, Mother of Democracy. Then, if you're looking at the best tableau in state category, the answer is Odessa, and the theme is. Women empowerment in Viksit Bharat. Remember this. Women empowerment in Viksit Bharat. Okay. And the last one. I mean, this is fine now. Uh, and uh, one was the popular category. That would be Gujarat. Okay. Are we all good? Yeah. And uh, remember... Um, Armed Forces category, popular choice. So this is popular choice. Now we just saw that judge's choice was uh, the Sikh Regiment. And if we look at the popular choice, it is a Raj, Rajputana Rifles. And the best tableau in, uh, in state category, right? So we saw in the judge's category, it was uh, Odessa. And for Odessa, the theme was Women Empowerment in Viksit Bharat. For the popular choice, it is Dhordo, a global icon of Gujarat's border tourism. So this is actually a border, border town. So this particular jhaki was around Dhordo, which is a border town. I mean, next to Pakistan. All right. Now, 
again a very important news for the month of january is regarding ayodhya so you should know uh, that's not important who the judges are that's not at all important um, so just do this question who is the chief architect of the ram mandir very very father important father son duo so the father's name is mentioned here so can you please tell me the answer here who is the chief architect of the ram mandir in ayodhya guys i want you to answer the answer would be chandrakant sompara and his son is ashish sompara so both of them are responsible for the designing right for they are the chief architect of ram mandir the next one is who has uh, who is a sculptor of the of ram lala which was used for the pran pratishtha ceremony what is the answer to this what is the answer to this the answer to this would be arun yogi raj so he is a person who has crafted the uh, the, the ram lala right and just one more thing that the designing is on the nagara style right so just read about ayodhya because it's very much in news and uh, also the airport is named now maharishi valmiki airport okay so do read about ayodhya yeah now one more thing is a swach sirvekshan awards and what is the ministry which is responsible for these awards the ministry that is responsible for these award is the ministry of housing and urban affairs the option will be d okay next is which city received the recognition as a cleanest city in the swachh sirvekshan awards 2023 the cleanest city so sabse pehle se ek city chal rahi thi uska naam hai indore but is bar awards mein ek aur city ka naam add hua hai aur ye gujarat ki city hai uska naam hai surat so both these have got the award so answer would be indore and surat therefore the answer is c all right so answer is indore as well as surat so the most improved city in swachh sirvekshan awards 2023 the most improved city is what the answer to this would be panaji capital of goa so that's the most improved city right so beside this the cleanest cantonment is uh cleanest cantonment is mao the cleanest ganga town is um the cleanest ganga town is varanasi followed by prayagraj so that's and the top state is maharashtra so what we need to know about this award which is given by ministry of housing and urban affairs is the cleanest city is indore and surat best state maharashtra most improved state most improved city is panaji right and uh, and uh, yeah and that's about it and yeah the ganga town would be banaras followed by alaba and the mo- the cleanest cantonment is mao so just remember this so if you look at it you know one thread and you have six seven questions based on it okay yes so i did mention about this ms swaminathan award the father of green revolution uh who has been awarded the ms swaminathan award in fact he's also got bharat ratn this time ratna this time so posthumously so what is the answer to this question the answer will be guys i know it's been a long session but i still want to finish it off yes shivam that's absolutely right the answer would be professor b r kamboj he is the 
vice chancellor of Haryana University. So, M. S. Swaminathan, Fathers of India's Green Revolution, and uh, uh, yeah, so we just written about him. He got Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and Bharat Ratna. So, what is important is that besides getting all the Padma awards, he has also got the Bharat Ratna, right? Okay. Again, I discussed about this. You need to tell me where Ganga Swa Sagar, where is the Ganga Sagar Mela held every year? What is the place called? Guys, come on. The answer would be the place is called Sagar Dwip. Sagar Dwip or the Sagar Islands. Right? So, this is a place where the Ganga Sagar Mela is held. It is basically held around 14-15 January. It coincides, it coincides, it coincides with the Makar Sakrantri festival. So, it's basically a harvest season and you, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you pray Lord Shiv during this time. So, uh, and it is the second big biggest festival after Kummela. So the answer would be Sagar Island, West Bengal. Okay. So this is the second largest human congregation after the Kummela, annually held during Makasakranti, which is 14th, 15th of January, Sagar Island. Right? So that's about it. Okay. Now there was this event held, which is called Wings India 2024. Now, this event was held where? Can you tell me in the comment box? Wings India 2024 was held in Begum Pate. Was held in Begum Pate. So, this was civil civil aviation event. And uh, the theme of this, can you tell me the answer? What was the theme of this? Connecting India to the world in Amritkal. So the answer to this would be B. Right? The answer to this would be B. Connecting India to the world in Amritkal. Okay? So the largest aviation sector event in Asia theme connecting India to the world in Amritkal. This is important. Okay. And uh, the best airport award went to uh, Kempe Goda airport in Bangalore and it went to the Delhi airport. So this again becomes important. Kempe Goda International Airport, Bangalore and Indira Gandhi International Airport. So these two airports got the best award. We are almost done. Okay, quickly we'll just have a small quiz now. I want you to mark the answers. National Voters Day, quickly. Just mark the answers and we'll revisit. National Voters Day is National Voters Day is mark the answer please. Okay, the next question. What is the theme for Pravasi Bharti Divas NRI Day? Second, so the first question is this, National Voters Day, the answer would be 25th January. National Voters Day is 25th January. The next one is B, the next one is Tell me what is the answer to the second one. Okay, it is Diaspora Reliable Partners for India's Progress in Amritkal. Right, so that's the uh, Pravasi Bharatiya Devas and uh, NRI Day. Right, and this day is held on, if I'm not mistaken, 9th of January. That's the day when uh, Mahatma Gandhi returned from South Africa. Right, okay, so 9th of January is the Pravasi Bharatiya Devas, and this is the was the theme for 2024, Diaspora Reliable Partners for India's Progress in Amritkar. All right, the next question. 
What was the theme for World Hindi Day in 2024? World Hindi Day. So World Hindi Day is celebrated on the 10th of January. And the answer to this question is Hindi bridging traditional knowledge and artificial intelligence. So the answer would be B here. Okay. The answer would be B here. So World Hindi Day, 10th of January. Okay. So what we have just done is election day. Uh, I mean, the first one was National Voters Day, which is 25th of January. Then we came to Pravasi Bharatiya Divas, which is on the 9th of January. That's the day when Mahatma Gandhi returned from South Africa in 2015. So it is around that. The theme of this, Hamne Dekh Liya, Diaspora, Reliable Partners for India's Progress in Amritkal. Then Hindi Day, mein hum log aa gaye. Hindi Day kab hota hai? 10th of January ko hota hai. Or is theme kya hai? Hindi Bridging Traditional Knowledge and AI, Artificial Intelligence. Okay, then Youth Day, Priyanka ma'am discuss about the Youth Day. Why is it celebrated? It is to celebrate the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekanand, right? He was the one who introduced Hinduism to the world parliament in 1894. So, um, National Youth Day is the answer to this question. Tell me, what will it be? So the answer would be arise, awake, and realize the power you hold, right? So this is the answer to the National Youth Day 2024, right? Why is it celebrated? Swami Vivekanand's birthday. Okay, Startup Day. What was the theme for India Startup Day? Firstly, what is Startup Day? Kab hota hai? It is 16th of January. So just remember the day, 15th of January ko Army Day hota hai, right? 15th of January ko Army Day hota hai. Okay, I want you to do a research on this and find out the theme yourself now. Okay, find out the theme yourself for the theme here. Next is, what is the theme for the event observed on the 25th of January? National Tourism Day. Okay, so this is the homework that you are going to do. Startup Day ka theme kya hoga? Startup Day ka theme kya hai? And the next one is the theme for the National Tourism Day. Okay, you are isko. And that's about it. I hope you had a lovely session. Just start connecting the doubts today. In this two and a half hour session, we have tried to cover almost 70, 80 questions of GK. Right? Uh, it's still not the end. There are many tidbits that are still remaining, but that we will take up through your magazines, through mocks, and through, you know, whatever MCQs. For instance, you know, I don't know if you've heard about it, the Black Tiger Reserve. It has come up in Odessa. So you should know about it. There was this bird festival, which was held. It was a fourth bird festival held in uh, near Chilka Lake, right? Uh, read about it. So this was held in January, right? Besides that, uh, there is this Pench Tiger Reserve, which is on Pench River, which is Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. So there, there is this uh, dark sky, um, uh, dark sky park that has come up there. Okay, so that's important because uh, uh, so the dark sky park at Pinch in Pinch River, right? Second is the Chilka Lake, uh, the Bird Festival, right? Third is the Pekka Hornbill Festival, which is uh, which is in uh, Arunachal, uh, which is in Arunachal Pradesh. Read about it. So that's again a very important thing that happened. And Hornbill Festival, though, is in Nagaland. Pekave Hornbill Festival is in Arunachal Pradesh, right? So just uh, just start connecting the dots. This is the month of January, and what we really have to do is the next ten months has to be done religiously. Right, we'll be back again around 6th, 7th of March. But these videos, right, will definitely help you to at least get some 80, 90 questions from here. But when you do your research, just find the linkages 
and that's really going to help you. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you had a nice session and you learned a lot of things. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here for the next couple of minutes. You can ask me and see you in the classes. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's okay, Kavya. You had to be tired because uh, it's a long session. Two hours, 35 minutes is pretty long. But it was wonderful teaching you guys. And I look forward to coming again and doing the February along with Priyanka, man. But yeah, just uh, make sure that you guys do the MCQ. That's very important. So now what we'll do is we'll have an MCQ of some 100 odd questions. And uh, do that religiously and through that mcq again start getting the linkages you know once you do 300 400 questions it will become very very automatic so you know just stay with it there'll be a struggle for some time but you're going to fall in place yeah military exercises keep changing so just keep track of it uh, you know, just keep a note of it. Some exercises are important. Like this time, the one that I mentioned about uh, Aruthya and Ayodhya, that's important because of, you know, the, uh, the because of Ayodhya, right? So like that. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. If there's anything specific that you need, please do let me know. Yes, it, it keeps changing year after year. You keep adding the addition. Uh, Kavya, I have not read about it. Please do research. Uh, the ones that I mentioned, I found that pretty important. Right? Desert Cyclone, the one with Saudi Arabia, Kanjar, Steadfast Defender, right? The Naval uh, Anti-Submarine Operation, Guam. Yeah, you know, Modi hai to sab munkim hai. It's like that. That's the reason. So there's a maximum Bharat Ratna awards that have been given. Uh, four posthumously and one living. So, I mean, just don't get into that. That's not important. What you should know is that five Bharat Ratnas have been given. And you should know the name of these people and why. So Swaminathan is for aggregarian uh, research, father of green revolution. And the others for public welfare, because all of them are politician. P.V. Narsimha Rao and, you know, uh, P.V. Narsimha Rao, Chaudhary Charan Singh, and uh, yes, it is quite relevant, but whatever, I mean, whatever is important, we will tell in the class. Karpuri Thakur, right, so L.K. Advani, so we will take that up. Whatever is important, we'll definitely take that up in the session and in the classes and through the MCQ. So don't think much. Like even Ayodhya here, you should know about the uh, you, Ayodhya, you should know about the name of the international airport, who the architects are, who the uh, you know, who who is the, uh, the sculptor, right? So all these things you should know. Ayodhya is very important. And we linked it with the military exercise also with Ayodhya. Yes, yes, we'll arrange the MCQ so that we're doing and even the magazine has questions. So don't worry about it. And through the class also, we will, we will do it. So my idea is that we, you know, before we go for the exam, we do about 2000 questions uh, through MCQ. And I think that will take care of it. More than just doing the